Ernie, what's new in the field of neuropsychology? Well, I started in the field in the 1970s. Neuropsychology, I think, as a discipline has its roots in World War II, so back to the 1940s, because we found out that these uh, cognitive tests might actually tell you if there's something wrong with someone's brain. And so you had a lot of soldiers coming back with head injuries or what have you, and you wanted to find if they're impaired. And oftentimes it's too expensive or even too dangerous to do things like pneumoencephalograms or EEGs or what have you. And they weren't that sensitive. But we found that the cognitive test can actually pick up things. But over the years, the tests have gotten better and better as we've learned more about the brain. And I would say that the field has simply continued to advance in the sophistication of the tests, our understanding of the test results. And of course, as there have been advances in the general neurosciences like functional imaging, like functional MRI, we are beginning to get a much better appreciation of neuropsychological results and what may be going on in the brain when things like CAT scans or MRIs are too sensitive. Neuropsychological results are very sensitive to brain dysfunction. And in the past, the neuropsychologist may be the only one who's saying there's something wrong with the brain because the CAT scans or MRIs were normal. But now that we're looking at things like metabolism of the brain with PET scans and functional MRIs, we are finding out that, that uh, there are issues with the brain that correlate with the neuropsychological testing. So I would say that the technology is not vastly different other than the fact it's getting more sophisticated. We're improving. Mm -hmm. You know, there's more computerized testing that's coming in. In the field of rehabilitation, they're using more things like virtual reality. And I'm hoping that neuropsychological models begin to guide things like neurofeedback, which is modulating brain waves in the same way that you do with biofeedback. That's very promising. It's been oversold and understudied thus far. But the more we understand about how the brain relates to behavior and emotions, the better models we're going to have for what brain waves to manipulate with neurofeedback. I hope you like this video, and please let me know in the comments what questions you have and what other topics you'd like me to discuss.